Here, you leave sunshine and enter the world of darkness, fear, and chaos. For all who come to this dour place, beware. This land is the land of villains, the vilest, most despicable enemies of our great heroes. As we discussed in last week's video, D23 2022's Parks, Experiences, and Products panel concluded with the discussion of a potential expansion to Magic Kingdom, beyond Big Thunder Mountain. Last week, we delved deep into the first two ideas, Coco and Encanto Lands, but one more was mentioned. Far behind the bright and colorful Madrigal Casita is a land where color dares not tread, a land defended by deadly bramble, where a towering black mountain casts a shadow over joy and hope. A land where villains like Maleficent, the Evil Queen, Captain Hook, and Chernabog can plot their wicked schemes. An idea for a villain's land has existed for a long time. It has been theorized for decades that it could even be the fifth gate for Walt Disney World, an entire park representing the exact opposite morals and themes that the resort has upheld for the past 51 years. Magic becomes witchcraft, heroism is exchanged for cynicism, and hope is buried by fear. A villain mountain ride was even pitched at one point, a flume ride on the river Styx to the underworld, featuring an array of iconic villains including a massive animatronic of Chernabog from Fantasia as the exciting finale. The idea never quite panned out, as you could assume. But would an idea for a villain's land even work? More so, is a single land enough for such a grand idea? More importantly, would this land even fit in the Magic Kingdom? Let's discuss. Let's start by considering why a villain's land is so highly demanded and why it garnered such uproarious applause when mentioned at D23. We love a good villain. Often, especially in the early Disney animated films, the villains oozed charisma and personality. The pure-hearted, do-no-wrong Snow White could not hold a candle to the evil queen, who was so consumed by jealousy that she would seek to have her stepdaughter's heart cut out and put in a box. For as long as storytelling has existed, children and adults alike love a good scare. Goosebumps and ghost stories around a campfire prepare young horror enthusiasts, while classic horror films are celebrated in the cultural zeitgeist. And theme park fans are no strangers to enjoying a good thrill. It's why the Haunted Mansion is so beloved. It represents an opposition to the positivity enjoyed around the rest of the Magic Kingdom. Heck, it's the one place a cast member is told not to smile at. But aside from the Haunted Mansion, horror is not really present at Walt Disney World, leaving Universal Studios to dominate the market. Halloween Horror Nights are wildly popular. It's been heavily rumored that the upcoming third Universal Park, Epic Universe, will house an entire land for classic movie monsters. So it makes perfect sense that Disney would be interested in competing with this genre of entertainment, utilizing their own iconic gallery of miscreants. In fact, like with Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Parties, Disney is presented with a unique opportunity to compete with Universal while simultaneously providing a more kid-friendly alternative, keeping the scares family-friendly. So I think the idea would not just work, I think it would be very popular. But is a single land enough for an idea this massive? Honestly, I would say no. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying the idea can only work as a full park. But I think the concept art's small carving of land is simply not enough room for anything significant and impressive to happen. If it were up to me, I would give the villains the entirety of the land beyond Big Thunder. The Imagineers could develop a miniaturized layout of the Magic Kingdom, with the hub and spoke design. The central structure can be Chernabog's Mountain, surrounded by mini-lands for each villain. The Evil Queen's Castle, Dr. Facilier's Magic Shop, Ursula's Cave, Syndrome's Fortress are just a handful of ideas. With the current layout, and the concept art featuring a mountain surrounded by Bramble, I would expect the land, as currently considered, would have a roller coaster based on Chernabog, as well as an attraction featuring Maleficent. And I just don't think that would do the idea justice. But let's move on to the last question. Does this idea fit the Magic Kingdom? Despite the Magic Kingdom being a place of joy and happiness, it is no stranger to a little spookiness. As we mentioned, the Haunted Mansion is a beloved attraction despite being a bit oppositional to the rest of the park. Hiding a villain's land behind Big Thunder Mountain's large orange spires seems like a perfect idea, especially if the Imagineers can properly hide the land from view while in the happier areas of the park. It would be a bit of a disaster if one could see Chernabog's Mountain while riding Dumbo, for example. Like Galaxy's Edge in Disneyland and Hollywood Studios, it is imperative that the land exists in its own bubble, hidden from the outside and outside hidden from within. 
If that can be accomplished while still having an impressively sized marquee mountain, I would welcome the idea. So to recap, my opinion on this idea is that yes, I think it can work and would be beloved if done right. I think it would fit the Magic Kingdom very well if hidden properly, but I do not think it would work with such a small footprint as the concept art depicts. The idea of a land run by the bad guys is ripe with creative opportunities and it needs room to flourish in those ideas. So for that reason, I would implore Walt Disney Imagineering to reconsider their Beyond Big Thunder Mountain concept. I would recommend that that be done in one of two ways. One, put Coco in the Mexico Pavilion and put Encanto in a brand new Colombia Pavilion. Then give the villains full reign over the backside of Big Thunder. Or give Encanto and Coco full ownership of the backside of Big Thunder while giving the villains a whole new area, perhaps behind the Haunted Mansion? With this idea, a dark and dreary land would fit as a lovely backdrop to the spooky Victorian mansion, eliminating the need to hide it from the rest of the park. Oh, also, this idea just came to me, but for either placement, I would love for a River Styx boat ride to take you to the land. But anyway, what do you think? Is a villain's land a good idea? Do you like where the concept art placed it? Let us know in the comments, I'd love to know what your thoughts are. If you liked this video, be sure to give us a like and subscribe for more Disney Parks discussions. We also have Instagram and Twitter, you can follow those to never miss a new video. Thanks for watching.